Patrick Flaherty, an economist with the State Labor Department, is here on Face the State to talk about Connecticut's economy, the jobless rate, and where we are, what jobs have been added, and what jobs have been lost. Thank you so much for joining us on Face the State. This is such my a, pleasure. It's a tough topic, isn't it? I mean, you, you want things to get better. Are they getting better? I mean, I think you and I spoke, and there are still about 170,000 people. 170,000 people are unemployed. Uh, things un uh, are getting better. Unfortunately, we did see a very slight drop of jobs in July, but that follows a June where we gained 5,300 jobs. So on net, we're up over the last couple of months, and we've been sort of seesawing back and forth with, uh, unfortunately, basically a flat trend uh, here in 2011 after some pretty uh, good growth in 2010. Uh, Connecticut came out of the recession faster than the country. Uh, we grew jobs at a faster rate than the rest of the nation uh, and regained almost 20% uh, of the jobs we'd lost in the recession during 2010. What happened? Well, uh, in effect, the national economy has really slowed down, and we have slowed with the rest of the country, um, which is actually different from previous recessions where Connecticut has been one of the laggards. Uh, over the past year, uh, we've gained jobs. Uh, just not as many as we would like and unfortunately our unemployment rate has been stubbornly stuck at 9.1 percent for over a year now. How many people are have exhausted their unemployment benefits? Well uh, w including the emergency and the extended programs it's actually possible uh, or it was possible for people to collect up to 99 weeks of benefits. There are over uh, 53,000 people in Connecticut who exhausted those 99 weeks and then were uh, removed from our roles. Uh, only about 10,000 of them have found jobs. Oh, so that sounds bad. It is bad. It is bad oh, yeah. um, that there are that many people uh, who, you know, we're obviously we're working and then we're out of work and then, uh, and some of them even after a year after their benefits have expired are, are still looking for work. Uh, the folks that uh, have exhausted and have been able to find work tend to be a little bit older uh, than uh, than other workers. Um, but it's about even between men and women, and there doesn't seem to be any pattern with regard to, uh, to former industries. Whether they found work or not, uh, it's just the vast bulk of them have not been able to find work yet. Yeah, you know, it's interesting you say that. This week I had a conversation uh, with a woman in Hartford um, who uh, has been out of work for a few years. She's managed to get temp jobs, yep. uh, but says it's very difficult. Uh, she's in her 50s, and uh, she told me that still employers uh, feel if you've been out of work for a long time, uh, it is kind of a, a stigma and that they don't want to hire you. Yes. Are you finding that? Yeah, we're, we're hearing that too. And unfortunately, it's a, it's a change that uh, employers are just going to have to, we feel, have a, have a new uh, attitude. Uh, the workforce that we have is older, and that's a long-term trend. Uh, the workforce that we have has certain experience, certain skills, and perhaps some of our workers have to become a little bit more flexible in looking at the in occupations and industries that they didn't work in in the past. And employers are also going to have to say that, you know, it isn't just the 22-year-old that just got out of college. Uh, there may not be as many of those in Connecticut in the future as we've had in the past, but there's someone else who might be 50, might be 55, uh, who's had a very different experience than you would expect for that particular job or that particular industry, but yet they can be retrained, they are ready to work. Uh, these are the types of people that you know certainly contact us at the Labor Department all the time for help and for training, and they really are ready to start second or even third careers. Um, and it is a workforce that the state has that is uh, vastly underutilized at the moment. A challenge to try to uh, convince employers or to re-educate them, if you will. They're not young and maybe they're not cheap. <laughs> well, or maybe they are. Well, they may not be cheap, and that's another thing. The, the, the workers themselves might have to unfortunately adjust uh, expectations. And as we discussed earlier, there are people who have seen the value of their retirement funds reduced, seen the value of their homes reduced. Maybe their spouse has also been out of work for a while, and so their standard of living is much lower than they had anticipated even five years ago. I mean, it was a devastating recession, uh, both uh, in Connecticut and nationally, and the consequences of that will be be with us for years and uh, it does uh, uh, you know from a workforce perspective uh, there's bad news and good news the bad news is that some of these folks aren't going to have to extend their work lives many more years than they had expected and are going to retire later the good news is that that actually becomes a resource for our economy uh, that some of these older workers really have a lot to offer and so you know some of the work that's been done to try to attract young people to our state and try to get more young people to come to college in our state. I certainly support that, 
but it may not be enough. And the, what we do have are these older people who are ready to go and ready to work. We're running out of time, but if you would tell us what are perhaps the top three fields where uh, you're seeing job growth and the top three you're not. Well, the top field, of course, is healthcare, uh, where we're seeing a lot of job growth there, and then in educational services. Uh, recently, we've actually seen some good growth in both construction and manufacturing, which is a real turnaround from what we've seen in the, the worst year, uh, months of the recession. And while at the moment, uh, many of the service industries, like professional services, are really going through a slow period, our longer-term projections are that those are really going to pick up, and that uh, for a career planning perspective, getting those math and science skills skills is going to be very important in the future. And where are we losing jobs? Well, we're losing jobs at the moment in some of the uh, administrative services, in the headquarters, and finance has really been at a stall. We had a decline during the recession, and we've really seen no growth in finance uh, and insurance uh, on net uh, in the entire recovery period. And the service industry, I would imagine hotels, restaurants. Uh, yeah, we yeah. had a good pickup in those industries last year, and that has also stalled out. Uh, and uh, it's a really uh, very disappointing uh, last few months. Uh, in the long run, however, I do think that those are going to come back. Where do we go from here? You're going to have another report out. When does that come out? Well, reports come out every month, and uh, we'll look forward to see what happens in, in August. In the middle of September, we'll have the August numbers. And we'll all keep our fingers crossed. It's tough, though. I mean, when you hear, and I know the Labor Department works hard, and they have career services, and they try to find jobs for people, but it's tough. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one thing I would say that every month there are 25,000 new jobs in uh, companies that have started or have expanded. Unfortunately, we're also losing about 25,000 jobs a month. And so that net decline of 300 masks a very dynamic economy. And so even if you're out of work, remember 25,000 people in Connecticut got a job last month. You could be that person uh, this month, even if overall the numbers are declining. So keep trying, no matter what happens. Exactly. All right. Thank you so much, Patrick. You're certainly Claire. welcome. Thanks for being with us today. I'm Susan Raff, inviting you to join us here on Channel 3 next Sunday morning at 11 when more newsmakers face the state.